I've been eagerly awaiting the developers to finally respond to the plea of the community to add perk loadouts into the game. PC players have had this in the form of a mod early on and it works perfectly. Unfortunately, console players have been stuck dealing with the clunky and time-consuming UI. Now we are finally getting a huge quality of life update that should really change the game for new and veteran players. I've been working on this video for a long time, waiting for this update to arrive. I'm going to show you guys arguably the most fun bloodied build. This build features many different weapon types and play styles without changing any special points to achieve this. I'm going to lay out the perk loadout for each of the build archetypes as well as detail some pros and cons of each that I discovered while testing this build out. This is going to be a lot of information thrown at you and you're going to need a lot in order to make this build work. So I'm going to include timestamps to the individual loadouts so you can pause at certain points to reference later on. Now, a few quick notes before I get started. For those of you that don't know what a bloodied build is, it's basically the glass cannon of this game. You're able to dish out an incredible amount of damage, but it comes at a cost of your survivability. You're going to want to keep your health around 30 to 20% to take full effect. This might seem too difficult or stressful to play with at this health constantly, and trust me, I've been there too. I didn't want to be a bloodied build because I didn't like that particular playstyle, but after I discovered it and tweaked it a little bit, I found that I can survive pretty well in this game with my build setup. So if you guys do the same, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Plus, dying in this game isn't that much of a bad thing. You can just go and pick up your junk once you respawn, so you can afford to have low health and still be viable. This particular build that I created isn't centered around full damage output that a bloody build can do. I found a nice blend of survivability and lethality. Some builds, such as the melee portion, may not make sense with my level of perception that it's at, but it does offer better benefits for the other builds that use a lot of perception perks. On that note, this build requires a lot of perks, enough to take advantage of six different weapon types at once, not to mention the correct legendary weapons with attributes that pair well with the build. I originally started playing this game as a melee build, but over the hundreds of hours I put into it, I was able to acquire a really nice supply of bloody weapons of every variety and that's kind of where the origin of this build came from so don't sweat it if you're just reaching level 50 and you're starting to form this massive build out and you don't have anything to make it it's going to take time and patience and honestly praying that RNG Jesus blesses you your best bet is to focus on one aspect of the build preferably one you already have a really good bloody weapon in your possession and then expanding as you get more later on. Without any further delay, let's get started. This is going to be your bread and butter in this build. In a game like Fallout 76, where you need a constant supply of resources to upkeep your weapons and armor, melee builds have a huge benefit where they don't need an additional item like bullets, so you really can keep going for a long time without needing to resupply. This part of the build is also pretty expansive as there are a lot of different legendary variants that you can use besides bloodied and still find success. You can even use some high level stock melee weapons with this build and you can kill enemies quickly enough which makes it a great foundation to start this build. I find using guns in Fallout 76 way more fun and less frustrating in the late game and melee seems to stay pretty easy and fun all the way through. This is probably one of the more difficult variations of the build to make effective as it requires you to have a very good legendary rifle so you don't burn through your ammo too quickly. You can swap out some perks in the agility category to add some sneak perks and add damage that way if it's more your playstyle. I particularly like using the lever action guns in this game and that pairs very nicely with the setup. Having high perception and agility means you also have a lot of action points and accuracy in VATS. I think a lot of people still prefer the old VAT system better, but it's so satisfying sniping people with VATS and quickly snapping to the next victim. 
This shows that you don't need to focus solely on a crit build to get effective Vax damage. This is a very interesting surprise for me as I always felt like heavy weapons in Fallout games were mostly for show and not something you wanted to form a whole build around. Having really strong legendary heavy weapons with this setup definitely opened my eyes and changed my perception on this type of weapon. A special thing to take note of is in order to use this variation to its fullest potentials, it means stepping into a set of power armor and losing your unyielding slash bolstering legendary effects from your armor. You can supplement this with the emergency protocol mod on your power armor of choice. You do burn a lot of ammo in this build, but it's very effective at taking out the scarier enemies in Appalachia. I usually only use this portion of the build when I'm going to fight the Scorch Beast Queen or Wendigo Colossus. You can pretty much handle anything else with the other builds in this video, and this way you save some precious ammo for the big fights that come up. Shotguns have sort of lost their place in the tier list of best weapons to make a build around for end game. They used to be unbelievably overpowered at the start and two shot explosive double barrel shotguns were the must have items amongst the players. Bethesda came around with the nerf gun and now shotguns are pretty underwhelming now. Until I tested it around a bit. Shotguns really benefit when the enemy has low damage resistance so enemies like Feral Ghouls and Scorched are perfect when using this type of weapon. Using Vats is also an essential, effective tool with this build. Close in on an enemy's head and you will make quick work with this build. It's a very fun build if you like running around close to enemies like a melee build, but you sort of miss using a gun and you want the added effect of using it. Pistols hold a very special place in my heart, and I can't quite explain it. Whenever I first play an RPG, I almost always go pistol build just to try it out. Very few games use pistols for their full advantage and only use them in the game as just a sidearm or early game weapons. At the start, this game was very much like that. I made a pistol and one-handed build, and I was devastated when I reached endgame, and the pistols were amongst one of the weakest weapon types. I quickly changed to a solo melee build and largely forgot about the pistols in this game until I was lucky enough to craft myself a bloodied goss pistol. I tested this build out with a couple really high damage pistols and I gotta say it's pretty satisfying running around like a cowboy quick drawing on enemies. One of the rewards for completing some of the early quests for the Brotherhood of Steel gives you a really good pistol that fits well with this build until you're able to find more. So if you don't want to start out this foundation of the build with a melee weapon, you can get the pistol from this quest and you could do some pretty interesting things until you can get some better stuff later on. Since bows were data mined in this game, I was eager to add this to my roster of build variations. I loved playing a stealth archer in Skyrim and I wanted to replicate my experience in this game. Unfortunately, bows don't feel much like they do in the Elder Scrolls, but that doesn't mean that they still don't pack a punch. These weapons are a lot like shotguns in that they require the enemy to have little damage resistance. It also helps if you stay stealthy and take out your enemies without alerting the others. This means using explosive arrows may not be the best approach. I haven't gotten my hands on a decent legendary bow yet, so I don't really know how this works on higher level enemies. I mostly use this while I'm traveling around the forest and want to add a little extra challenge. That's all the variations for this build, and I know it seems like a lot and it's hard to take in all this information and all of the things you need, but that's what I truly like about RPGs. I like tuning my class to fit my playstyle, and I find after hours of using the same weapons, I get rather bored and I want to spice things up. This allows me to choose the weapon I want for a certain situation and I'm not suffering 
from losing out on damage output. Each of those variations fill a purpose and it really makes playing the game more enjoyable. It, I also like that I don't have to create a new character just when I want to try out a new weapon that I got. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will be making a follow up one on what weapons to use with each variation. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on another showcase of this build to see what it can do if you're not convinced yet. Let me know in the comments section what you feel about this build and if there is anything you would like to add to it and make it better. I would like to hear your ideas below. This is probably the video that I have spent the most time on in all of the videos that I made so far. So I'm really happy with how it turned out and I really hope that it helps you guys in the game, whether you're new or you just wanna try out a bloody build. Thank you guys for checking out this video and I will see you in the next one.